Three, two, one. Yo! Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Welcome back to the channel. We have just finished watching Blue Lock Season 2, Episode 5, and the starting 11 has officially been chosen. Yo, hey, man. We say it all the time. What a time to be an anime fan. But in this case, what a time to be a subscriber of this channel as well as a member of the Patreon. If you haven't already... Head over to the Patreon and you can become a member for free. And you can watch the full reaction to Blue Lock Episode 5 as well as all the other things we watch over there. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But I'm not going to lie, before we started watching the episode, we had the discussion of wanting to see Bachira and Baru play. Turns out they already played and they both scored goals. But it's not that simple when selecting the starting roster because the players you select have to actually fit that position and mesh yeah. with our basically number one scoring option, which ended up being Rin. Hell yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. I guess it somewhat makes sense. Those two personalities, the way they were playing together in those tournament tryout matches, there's no shot they could have played together like that on the same field. So it makes sense that you didn't choose them. And at the end of the day, Blue Lock has enough talent to where it really doesn't hurt them not having them. It's just it hurts them that he went to the opposition because they really didn't need that nigga. But at the same time, let's think about this. They're a defensive team. And now they got two insane starters, Ren's brother and now Shido. Like, I'm not going to lie. This is going to be a crack team to go against. But when you look at our starting 11, we actually have a great squad. Baru didn't make the cut. I'm a little tight about that. I don't know really much about Afro nigga, but... He's going to have to prove that he deserved it over Baru because everyone else makes sense. Chigiri made it. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Not anyone from the top six by default makes sense. That one nigga who's playing goalie, we forecasted it. It makes mm -hmm. sense. Glam boy, I'm glad he's there. It makes sense. Like, he used to be number two. He got to be him to an extent. When you talk about everyone else, real, it kind of makes sense that he didn't, even though he showed out. But... Baru's the one nigga who I feel like belongs on that, like, 11. Like, I feel like there's not a cliff. So, that's where I'm a little surprised. Yeah, like, they put Nico in the starting lineup playing defense. Now, they have Nico playing defense, and they have Glam playing defense. Now, Glam yeah. Boy makes sense. He's tall as hell. Tall defenders are typically what you want when it comes to soccer. My soccer knowledge isn't crazy, but I know that much. And yeah. Nico, I don't know if he showed something in his game to where he makes more sense to play over Baru, but if I had to assume why Baru didn't make it, it's because he had to play defense, I would guess. And I don't know if he would be straight with that. Like, Yeah, but, like, you would think so. Like, I'm sure that nigga would want to score, but his big ass, like... I feel like he's physical enough to be on defense. He would make a great defender, but I feel like maybe he did that just because he would get the ball and try to go score with it and be out of position or some shit. I don't know. If I had to assume why he didn't make it. I think he should have made it, but if I had to guess why, I mean, that's the only yeah. thing I can come up with. But unfortunately, he didn't make the team. But our starting 11 does look fire, though. Like... The three-man attack for the most part around Rin, Isagi, and Nagi. That's broken. Hell yeah, but apparently this team on defense, they're a defensive team, but they also had a striker already who was playing for the Japan national team, and he was a starting forward. And now they added Shido, who was a loose cannon, and... Itochi Sei, I think his name was. Rin's brother. And that nigga acts just like him i mean he said i don't give a fuck about none of you niggas like yeah your goals don't compare to mine and shido essentially backed him up which i understand he kind of broke him out of prison but that's it was interesting about their meeting was shido was already putting hands on people but their star defender put him in his place their defense mm. is probably gonna be cracked hell yeah hell yeah like i'm not gonna lie there's the anticipation for this game is building up. Like, 
the U20 versus the Blue Lock X team. I'm not going to lie, it has, an, it has a chance to be a top five anime sports game if they actually deliver the way they can. Like, it easily can be. If they don't skip shit, if they actually give us a legit good soccer game, it could easily be a top five game just from all the talent alone that's built up. Like, that's crazy to say when you think about all the other sports animes out there, but... This is easily the peak of Blue Lock that's approaching if they do it right. So I'm excited for it, but I'm also excited about this lineup and overall just excited to let this episode reside in. But just thinking about this episode, how would you rate it? 10 out of 10, easily. Like, we barely got any soccer play at all, but the way that they set this match up, I mean, the fire, the rivalry already, like... Ren's brother chose Shido over him. Like, his condition to play this game was, I get to choose anybody. Shido's ego was literally too much for Blue Lock. We didn't have enough talent, according to Ego, to control him. So, Ren said, fuck it. Give me that nigga. And now he's on the other team. That is crazy as hell, but it also sparked the fire in Ren because he has n nothing more in this world that he wants than to crush his brother in this game. So that rivalry built up is amazing. There's so much riding on this game. Blue Lock is gone if they lose, but they take over if they win. Like All of this anticipation is building, but we also got Ego's flow state speech, which kind of resonated with me like... That flow state is real. Like whether you're playing oh, yeah. a video game, you get into that flow state, or when you're playing sports, and it feels like you can do nothing wrong in the game. Like that is a real thing, and I'm glad that they actually included it in here. So, going into this training camp in Blue Lock, I'm very excited, very curious to see what the future holds for everyone else that didn't make the team because they're still there. It's not yeah. like they got kicked out; they're still in the building. So, I'm really interested where that goes, but. Definitely a 10 out of 10 episode. Definitely. Like, I'm right there with you. I'd probably give it like a... I'd probably give it like a 9.7. Like, I'm not gonna lie. We say it all the time. When you strip away the stereotypical cool shiz, it's still fire. This is a sports anime. When you, strip, when you strip away the gameplays, it's still fire. And in this case, it was. Like, we got to see the dissection of the brain for what it looks like to be cracked in the game like ego broke it down pretty well and i think it was a great touch to the episode but everything else was also amazing we got to see ren's brother pop out and you know there's the saying ops clicking up with ops that literally happened here like shido and ren's brother literally ended up becoming teammates and i'm not gonna lie that's a crazy addition to an already broken opponent. But at the end of the day, Blue Lock is also very broken. They're just playing out of position. But at the end of the day, we got talent too. So this is definitely going to be a great game. And I was happy about the lineup. There's literally only one thing I would change, and that's Baru being on it. But I guess at the end of the day, it would be a hard gel, I guess. And he did say at the beginning... Like, some talent's going to have to be left off if you want to win. Which is also more reasons why I think that's part of the reason why the players who didn't make it didn't get kicked out of Blue Lock. Just because mm -hmm. they're probably not on it. It probably has nothing to do with them not being, like, contenders for the number one striker. They probably just didn't gel together for this game. Like, yeah, exactly. that nigga Nico, I doubt he's a better striker than Baru or more of a threat. Yeah, and that's that's like I'm glad it's a defensive position that he's in because if he was playing like the change I would make personally, one of the midfielders I'm bumping them to defense and I'm putting Barrow at midfield. That way, he's big enough to play midfield, he's fast enough to play midfield, and he can still go score. So it's like Hell yeah. his ego wouldn't be that much of a problem. When he's in the game, he wouldn't run out of position on defense or any dumb shit like that. Like, that wouldn't happen. If he plays midfield, he goes both ways. He's always around the ball. That's the change I would make, but it makes sense to an extent why he didn't make the roster. But 
this game is going to be insane, dog. Like, I'm really torn. Is this going to be a defensive game or an offensive game? Because you would think it'd be an offensive game, but the way their defenders is looking, it's going to be we interesting. Gonna see. We gonna see. What? We gonna see because we have players who are quite literally unguardable, but at the same time, they have players who literally do nothing but play defense. So this is actually very interesting. But yeah. we gonna see. Like our our offensive players, from what we've seen, they're cooking forwards trying to play defense. It's gonna be interesting going against actual defenders on the national level. I want them to bait these niggas too. I think they can too. Just looking at the I'm not Nico and Chigiri. I don't think he's just outright mixtaping niggas, but everyone else, the top six should be able to, and Bachura should be able to. Isagi's game is not really just cook niggas, but he will make his presence felt. Yeah. Like, that's at least eight. And then Aria used to be number two, and he never did shit in the past. So I'm expecting him to do something now. And even though he's defense, he won't be a liability. I can rely on that. So that's nine. Goalie nigga makes ten. It's really that Nico nigga. That's the only nigga I have an issue with. But... Other than that, we have literally a loaded ass squad. Hell yeah. What? Hey, man. If you enjoyed this episode as much as we did, make sure you hit that like button, hit the big red subscribe button if you haven't already, and turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss season two, episode six, or any of our other special videos. We drop straight bangers on this channel. So make sure you guys tap in with us. With that being said, make sure you guys click our description. There'll be three links waiting for you. The first one will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo on every platform. The second one will take you to our Discord. You feel Come me? on in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Join that Discord. Come vibe out with us. Talk about anything. Anime, not anime, sports, movies. It don't matter. And last but certainly not least, the link to our Patreon will be in the description. Make sure you guys join that. You can become a member for free and watch the full-length reaction to Blue Lock Season 2, Episode 5, or any of our other special videos or all the animes we're reacting on the channel and our Patreon exclusives. So make sure you guys check that out. But, uh, yeah, man. With that being said, S-O-T-L.